one who passes through our lives. Some lessons are painful, some are painless, but all are priceless. Thank you. And would the clerk please call the roll? present. Tonight for the Pledge of Allegiance, Eric Getch is joining us. Eric, on May 20th, Eric was awarded the rank of Eagle Scout at Grace Episcopal Church. He's a member of Troop 801 and prior to that, Troop 890. Eric's Eagle Project was the Lincoln Erdman Environmental and Fitness Trail. The project involved planting trees, a new visual white strip on part of the fence, planting perennials, two raised beds, trimming down perennials, and other raised beds. New soil, uh, a weed spilled, and uh, Eric led a total of 17 scouts and 10 adults, totaling 90 project, 91 project hours. And Eric's future plans involved to finish off his uh, schooling at Sale. In the summer, he'll be working at RCS. Eric, would you please come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Eric. Next is the approval of the minutes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. Been moved and second to approve those minutes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, although please the clerk please call the roll. Fourteen eyes. Next we'll move on, move on to item one point five, confirmation of council appointments. Alderman Hammond. Uh, Steve McLean. Um, <coughs> First document for you is dated May 20th. Uh, the mayor made appointments of Mike Helmke to be considered for appointment to the Sheboygan Transit Commission to fill the unexpired term of Lee Montemayor, whose term expires 4-30-2015. Joseph Arroyo to be considered for appointment to the Plan Commission to fill the unexpired term of Todd Wolf, whose term expires 4-28-2014, signed by the mayor. All together. Yep. And then uh, there are two that are letters from the county board advising that uh, pursuant to, the first one is pursuant to city's ordinance 92-0405, uh, pleased to appoint Supervisor Mark Winkle to serve as Boykin County's representative on the Board of Marina Park and Forestry Commissioners for one year term, which expires April 2014, signed by Roger Testrodi. Chairman of the board. And the second is pursuant to <clears throat> county board resolution number 20 and city of Sheboygan resolution number 161-93-94. Pleased to advise that I have appointed the following county board supervisor to serve on the city county shared services committee for the remainder of the 2012-2014 board term. And that's supervisor Edward Prochek. Again, signed by Roger Testrodi, chairman of the board. Now Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to confirm the appointments. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the appointments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please press your I button or oppose your nay button. Fourteen ayes. Okay, next we're gonna move into comments from the candidates for the vacant aldermanic seat in the first district. So the clerk will call up the candidates and, um, and when you come up, you'll have like three minutes or so to uh, give us some reasons why the council people should vote for you later on when we go proceed into the election. Okay, what we're going to do, because there are several candidates combined with both districts, we're going to take District 1 first, 
So I'm going to be calling you up, and if you give your comments, and then we're going to do the election for District 1 after that, and then we'll do comments for District 6 candidates and do the election after that. Okay, first one on my list is Ty Dassler. Ty, if you wouldn't mind coming up, please. <clears throat> you may go ahead. Okay, uh, my name is Ty Dassler. Um, I grew up in Sheboygan and then lived in uh, Chicago area for 15 years and moved back to Sheboygan about eight years ago. Uh, with me, I brought my wife and two kids. Um, we are choosing to live in Sheboygan. Sheboygan's a great place. Um, when the seat came open, I just found myself in a position um, that at the time and uh, uh, resources to commit to commit to the seat. So I decided to to throw my name in for uh, for consideration. Um, other than that, I think you got my questionnaire and you got my initial letter of intent. So that's all I got. Thank you, Ty. Uh, next, could we have Nicholas DeSalt, please? My name is Nick Dussault. I've been a resident of Sheboygan for about 33 years now um, and I've raised my children here and uh, really like the city. And my reason for um, applying was that I have the time, I'm retired, and would like to contribute to the, the betterment of the city. Um, I have uh, sent my uh, documentation in, and I only have a couple of things to expand upon. Uh, from that documentation. The first is I, my, one of my current activities uh, involving the city is that I am uh, working through the auspices of Habitat for Humanity uh, to work on the Gateway Project and the uh, Erie Avenue Revitalization Program. Um, my wife is the uh, president of Habitat, so I get involved in a lot of these projects. Um, and I'm work currently working on a grant to expand our a uh, number of partnerships and the funding to help uh, rebuild a number of the uh, buildings as the uh, property is acquired. The uh, second uh, area that I would like to expand upon is uh, I worked in the uh, Green Bay Area School District. I, uh, I was on the superintendent's cabinet. I participated in uh, six budget deliberations at, at that level where we uh, over those six budgets cut about 30 to $40 million, uh, given the constraints of cross controls and the uh, other limitations on our budgeting. It's a very difficult process to do. Um, you have a, a exposure to all the different perspectives on what should be kept and what should be cut. Um, and during those uh, six uh, opportunities, uh, I, we uh, increasingly developed uh, better and more uh, sophisticated ways to look at the budget, uh, to collect information about what was important, uh, to rank um, those um, areas that uh, were less needed than others, and to be able to present those uh, budget cuts to our constituents and, and to our uh, employees in a way that was acceptable. So that was a, uh, a valuable learning experience, not an easy one. Uh, we learned how to study um, the various elements of the budget, how to, how to uh, make the tough decisions, and how to um, move on from those decisions. Um, and as the uh, six budgets went through, we got uh, a lot better with the practice of, uh, of making those decisions and were able to, uh, even though the decisions were tougher, we were able to make those decisions um, and, and to uh, move forward with uh, being in compliance with the budget constraints. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to um, apply and uh, look forward to hearing the other candidates. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, next, could we have William Rigsby, Jr.? <laughs> William, you might want to pull the mic up just a little bit. There you go. 
Good evening. My name is William Rigsby. I've been a member of uh, this great community since uh, 1986. I moved here from uh, the northern part of Wisconsin, and I think I felt uh, an immediate connection that Sheboygan was uh, the kind of place I wanted to be. I retired several years ago and have gotten uh, pretty involved in, uh, in the community. I'm a member of the Senior Center. I volunteer at Sunny Ridge. I'm a election poll worker, and this year I'm uh, the co-chairman. I'm a veteran. I gave four and a half years to my country. I believe in a democratic process, and uh, I look forward to the opportunity of serving on the council. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And next will be Seth Fuller. Mr. Mayor, Madam Clerk, ladies and gentlemen of the Council, my name is Seth Fuller. I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you this evening. I believe I have clearly stated my positions and qualities in the email you received. The email also asked me to keep this very short, so I have. I would be honored to be appointed to work with the citizens and the Council to address all matters of city business and citizen concerns. I would strive to maintain or improve the quality of life for all citizens, to continue to attract new employers, and to help current employers expand and provide well-paying jobs for the community. I'll be dedicated to providing the highest level of city services at reasonable cost and to recruit and maintain the employment of qualified, caring, and hardworking employees. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. And lastly, we have Daniel Hill. Daniel? Honorable Mayor of Vandersteen, distinguished members of the Common Council, fellow residents of Sheboygan, I stand before you today seeking your approval to fill the vacant seat of Alderman for the 1st District. A short time ago, I vied for this seat during a time when our community was starting to face several challenges concerning our economy, unemployment, and tax issues that both the property and small business owner would be facing. Like most, if not all the members of the Common Council, I walk door to door in an effort to raise the importance of these issues and to learn a great deal from the residents within my community. A few of the people that I met later became professional clients of mine. Some of them decided to become more involved within our community. Several of them are now lifelong friends and neighbors. But all the people that I had the opportunity to meet with, their voices were heard and their concerns were duly noted. After touching base with several of these residents within my district once again, a resounding message has resonated from them. Today, they are struggling financially to meet, make ends meet for their families. They are deeply concerned about the safety of their children at their local schools. And they believe that after you re they are worried about the escalation of crime within their neighborhoods. I believe that after you review the resume that I submitted along with my letter of introduction for this position, that you will feel that my experience, education, and qualifications will be beneficial and complementary to this council. By working together, we can draw upon the qualities and strengths of each member of this council to conceptualize fresh, new, and strategic decisions to address not only these immediate concerns that I brought before you today, but also take a stand to become a more proactive common council for those issues that we face tomorrow. In closing, I would like to reiterate the last statement contained with my letter of introduction that was submitted for your consideration. I would like the opportunity to honorably represent my constituents with the fullest amount of compassion and zeal that I can in an effort to help our community to strive toward a better future for our children, a future of social conscience and fiscal responsibility. A vote of confidence from the Common Council for me to serve as alderman for the first district would indeed be a great honor. But it would also send a clear message to our community that together we have decided to make a firm commitment to raise the standards of our local government and to provide a better quality of life for all of our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. 
Okay, next. Well, well, first of all, I wanted to thank everyone for their comments and, and for uh, taking the time to, to look at the possibility of becoming an alderman. Next, we'll go on to the election of alderperson for district number one. I'd entertain a motion to, uh, on the nominations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. Thank you very much for that motion and second. All right, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna ask the candidates to please stand when they're announced because of the number, um, and this is in no speci uh, specific order. Um, I nominate the following for District per District 1 Alderperson, Mr. Ty Dasseler, Mr. Nicholas DeSalt, Mr. William Rigsby Jr., Mr. Seth Fuller, and Mr. Daniel Hill. Second. It's been moved and seconded to place these candidates uh, in nomination for the position of Alderman for the 1st District. Is there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move nominations be closed. Second. It's moved and seconded to close nominations. Would the clerk please call the roll? All eyes. No, just vote. We'll do all eyes on this. Pardon me? We can do all eyes on this. Any, all, all eyes? Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. I'm a little bit confused on the process here. Uh, we're going to take a vote for the candidate. Now, does one candidate uh, have to get uh, a majority of the council, or can how is this going to work? Um, City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. According to the motion, as far as the process, uh, if there are more than two candidates for nominated, a candidate with the lowest number of votes drop from the list and balloting continues until one candidate receives a majority of the, of the, of the council. 14 of you. Okay, so thank you. If one first vote gets off. Okay, thank you. This is an open ballot, so you need to put your own name on the, on the uh, screen and also indicate who you're voting for. Alderman, if you could print on the first line, it says print last name so we can get what your name is. Yeah. Not that I'm insulting you by your snide. No, didn't say that.
Okay, we do not have a majority yet. Uh, Ty Dassler received four votes. Nicholas DeSalt uh, received three votes. Seth Fuller received three votes. Daniel Hill received two votes. And William Rigsby received two votes. So we drop out the two lowest candidates and we go forward with the other three. So new ballots will be distributed. And again, it's a vote for either Ty Dassler, Nicholas DeSalt, or Seth Fuller. Okay, we still do not have a majority, but the vote came out as seven votes for Ty Dassler, five votes for Nicholas DeSalt, and two for Seth Fuller. 
So Seth Fuller's name will be dropped from the next ballot and we'll be voting for either Ty Dassler or Nicholas DeSalt. Okay, the votes came out, nine votes for Ty Dassler and five votes for Nicholas DeSalt. Ty Dassler, welcome to the Common Council. You can come up here and, and uh, grab the uh, seat that Alderman Wolf had uh, occupied previously and, uh, and join us for this meeting. Now, you won't be able to, to vote, but I wanted to uh, make sure that you felt like an alderman for the rest of the evening. <laughs> And I want to thank all the other candidates who participated in the uh, uh, first district aldermans. Appreciate all your time and effort in, uh, in trying out for this role. And let's give our congratulations to Ty. Okay, next uh, clerk will call up the candidates for the vacant aldermanic seat in district number six.
right, first on the list is Brian Bitters. Brian, if you could come forward. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the Common Council and Mayor. Uh, I came here in 1991. Uh, I was supposed to be working for Kohler Company for one month. One. That was 1991. 22 uh, years later, I am still here. I am now uh, married and a father of two children. I have a daughter who, who's here tonight. In that time, I, I watched a lot of things and wanted to put my two cents in every time around. Uh, Blue Harbor development, the marina, the shared ambulance service, a, any number of things I could Monday morning quarterback all you want. Where I want to end up at, I want to, uh, I want to say I put my stamp on it. I can complain endlessly about how other people did things, but at some point you have to say, no, if you're going to do it, do it yourself. And that's how I stand before you tonight. Whatever happens, and no matter what side of the issue, you'll always get my honest opinion. And that's, that's the best promise I can give any of you. And with that, I ask for your vote. And those are uh, all my remarks for tonight. Thank, Thank you very much. Next would be Joel Pentacle. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Joel Pentico. I've been a resident of the city of Sheboygan for just about 10 years. Um, I was raised in East Troy, lived in Manitowoc, Menominee, Milwaukee, and a number of other Wisconsin cities. A short time in Maybank, Texas. I've been a Wisconsin resident all of my life. All of the places I've lived, um, I've enjoyed for various reasons, but in Sheboygan, I finally you know, find a place that I feel as home and I can settle down and enjoy it here. Um, one of the things I like about Sheboygan, it, it, there, it has many of the amenities of it feels uh, like a larger city with a small town type of feel with the people. Um, large events like Brat Days um, and smaller events like Oktoberfest for Allen Ells, which is almost right in front of my house, um, give a sense of community, and it's that sense of community that uh, inspires me to seek a position as alder person in my district so I can help you know, bring something back to uh, the city. I'm the type of person that gets excited when I get a jury summons and a little let down when I don't get selected. Um, I have a passion for research and debate. Um, when someone asks my opinion, I don't, I sit down, I read, I talk to other people, other experts in that area, and then I form an opinion. Um, Sorry, I lost, uh, I'm excited because I get to be stand up here. Like I said, uh, participating in the, in the process and uh, kind of makes me a little lightheaded. Uh, <laughs> um, but this habit of research I have and the passion I have for you know, getting to the meat of any matter um, means two things. I'll understand as much as I can all sides of the issue and try to find a solution that works the best way for everyone involved. Um, I would love to use these gifts I have um, to assist the city of uh, Sheboygan and work with all of you and make the city a better place to live for everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. And 
Last is Bill Wangaman. Good evening. This place has a strange familiarity to me. <laughs> As Peanuts said in the famous uh, Peanuts cartoon, uh, this is like deja vu all over again. You all have copies of the documents I wrote. I can assure you I did them in absolute sincerity. There isn't a whole lot to say. I was going to write a self-aggrandizing speech, and I turned that down very quickly because I found out I didn't have much material to work with. <laughs> but uh, the main reason I'm here is to ask for your support in coming back to the council once again. It's always been a deep honor for me to serve, and it would be a deep honor to serve again. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you to all the candidates. And now we're going to go on with the election of Alderperson for District Number 6. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations, that, I move that all nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot. And if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. It's been moved and seconded to conduct the elections for the uh, aldermanic seat in district number six. Will the clerk please call the roll? No. Um, oh, okay. Again, if you could please stand when your name is announced, and this is in no special order. I nominate the following for district six alderperson, Mr. Brian Bitters, Mr. Joel Pentico, and Mr. William Wangaman. Second. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Would the clerk please call the roll? All ayes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Okay, the voting will then take place. Thank you. 
votes. Uh, Brian Bitters, two votes. Joe Pentico, six votes. And William Wangaman, six votes. So uh, Brian Bitters will be dropped from the list and we'll vote again for either Joe Pentico or William Wangaman. Okay, the votes were Joe Pentico, eight votes, and William Wangaman, six votes. We have a new alderman, Joe Pentico. <laughs> Joe, there's a vacant seat up here for you. Yep. Um, we'll be doing the swearing in of the two new aldermen at the beginning of our next meeting, and I'll have the committee appointments before you then for consideration at that meeting as well. Next is the public forum. Okay. Do we have any? Yes, we do. All right. Public forum this evening, we have three. Uh, first on the list is Joanne Scribner. Joanne, if you could come up to the front. And Joanne, I need your home address, please. Free Seneca Trail. Okay, and you will have five minutes. I would like to thank Mayor Vandersteen and the Schweigen Common Council for the opportunity to speak again at public forum. First, I would like to give a public service announcement and endorsement for Sparky's. Sparky's hot dog stand is the place to go around noon for lunch or 5 o'clock p.m. for supper or any time that you are hungry between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. on a Monday through Friday or 11 a.m. through 2 p.m. on a Saturday. If you like hot dogs, Sparky's is definitely the place to go. You can buy a regular hot dog with ketchup and onions and mustard and other condiments for only $2.50. Or you can really splurge and buy a Sparky's Chicago hot dog with the works for only $3.50.
So, when you're hungry, check out Sparky's hot dog stand at two locations in Sheboygan. At Superior Discount Liquor, parking lot down there by the South A Street Bridge, or you can go by the Superior Discount Liquor Store by Wilgus and Superior Avenues once in so, right here in Cooler by the Lake, Sheboygan. Try Sparky's hot dogs today, actually tomorrow, since it is after 6 p.m. when they close. Sparky's hot dogs, voted by Sheboygan County hot dog lovers as the best hot dogs three years in a row, 2010, 2011, and 2012. Try Sparky's hot dogs tomorrow. Second, I would like to talk about an 11-week class that I recently completed and even got a certificate for taking the course. It was signed by the leaders of the class and I might even have the certificate framed and place it on my living room wall right next to the deer mounts or maybe next to the clock or maybe next to the framed picture. I'll figure out later where I'll place that um, certificate. Anyway, moving along, the class I took is called Citizens Academy. I first heard about Citizens Academy several years ago from Jerry Doyle, my Fountain Park Church Sunday School teacher. Jerry Doyle used to be an alderman on the Sheboygan Common Council some years ago, and he took the Citizens Academy class and enjoyed it, and he suggested that I take the class sometime if I get the chance. I thought it might be a fun class to try sometime. Then this February of year 2013, Sheboygan's fine local AM radio station WHBL 1330 on your AM dial ran a spot on the upcoming Citizens Academy to begin in March 2013. Your friendly WHBL news announcer who was seated right there, Michael Kinzel, Mike Kinzel, or perhaps it was Kelly Meyer, the other friendly announcer, um, was interviewing Sheriff Todd Preeby and Sergeant Jim Gottsacker, and they were explaining about what Citizens Academy is about, when it started, as far as the data was going to start this year, how long the class was, and who can apply. Then your local newspaper, the Sheboygan Press, located at 632 Center Avenue, right here in Cooler by the Lake, Sheboygan, represented here tonight by reporter Michael Losero, also ran an announcement about the upcoming March 2013 Citizens Academy and how to apply. So, how do you apply? Well, you call the telephone numbers listed in the Sheboygan Press or mentioned on WHBL radio. There might even be a website you can click on, but my favorite tool of communication is still the telephone. So, I called my favorite sheriff in the whole world, although Milwaukee County, David Clark is definitely in the running for that, but my favorite sheriff, Todd Preeby. Um, so, I was on the list of applicants, and on March 8th, 8th of 2013, I received a letter from Sheboygan Police Chief Christopher Domogalski, who is sitting way back there in the back row, and Lieutenant Michael Williams, Meg's supervisor, saying, <clears throat> Dear Joanne, you have been selected to participate in this year's Sheboygan Police Academy, Citizens Academy. This year's Citizens Academy is a joint venture with Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. We hope that you find the Academy to be an interesting and rewarding experience. Excuse me, Joanne, your time is up. Yes, Sue, I would like my extra minute. Motion to approve. Okay. Thank you, Common Council, for letting me again have my extra minute. Always need that extra minute. Um, the letter then went on to explain where to report. The class started on Thursday, March 14, 2013 at 6.30 p.m., went until 9.30 p.m., and met at the Sheboygan Police Station Department at 1315 North 23rd Street. Another reason I took the Citizens Academy class, besides thinking it would be fun, is that my nephew, Um, Michael John Joslin, who is uh, my brother's youngest kid, 
decided to become a cop. So, well, you know, and yeah, he's got this police car, this neat police car that he, you know, also. And um, this is Mike Hull, John Johnson, when he was uh, a small kid. He was scrawny. And then he took a lot of bodybuilding classes and became a bigger kid. Anyway, um, so that was another reason why I decided to take the Citizens Academy course. Excuse me, Joanne. I'm sorry, the minute's up. Later. OK, thank Next you. Next time. Thank you. All right. Next on the list, I have United Council UW students. Do I have one person that's going to speak on behalf of the group? OK, come on up. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were bringing the whole university or just the few. <laughs> OK, that's good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to need some names here of who's going to be speaking. Why don't we give you your name? Hi, my name is Amanda McGovern. Amanda. And my address is 435 Michigan Avenue. OK, and your name? My name is Doug Meyer. Doug Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R? M-E-Y-E-R. Okay, a same address? Or you can put it down as the same address. Okay. All right, so which one of you is speaking? I will be speaking. And you will have five minutes, sir. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I am a board member on United Council for UW Students. United Council was founded in 1960 and represents over 180,000 students at 21 universities, UW Wisconsin universities. This is a student advocacy organization and we really recently worked together to pass the tuition freeze that some of you may be very well aware about. That is our organization that worked very hard to push that through. And recently, by surprise, the state legislature made a provision to the upcoming state budget removing the mandatory refundable fee. This is the $3 fee that we get from, from the UW students' tuition that goes towards United Council. How that fee starts and how they become a member is by a vote, a university-wide vote. And if the students vote in favor of United Council, they become a member. And then we represent them. That, that income is 98% of the United Council's budget and has recently been taken away from us from this provision. So it's imperative that we do this kind of stuff to get you guys aware of it to try to reverse that process. They are trying to change it to more to like an opt-in kind of thing where the students actually have to opt in to give us that money. That's literally like us going up to every student asking for $3. It's something that just can't be done to make a sustainable budget for United Council. So why I'm here today is we need to work together and we're passing out flyers and postcards to send to Governor Walker and our Senator, Senator Leibaum, who represents us in his district. Now the things on why this is important is because United Council recently passed the tuition freeze, so we represent students and we're doing things for students to help them go to school. Tuition's raising constantly and it's imperative that we stop that and United Council is the student advocacy group that fights for that stuff. Not only that, but they also offer leadership opportunities for students like myself. I'm going into political science and I get the opportunity of sitting on the board of directors for United Council, which is a great learning experience for me. It also gives student voices in politics, which is really needed to fight for students. So the government knows our needs and can meet them, since we are paying such large amounts for tuition. We also work towards social justice campaigns, which are campaigns that um, help with people of color issues, as well as LGBT, G, LGBT issues. We have great upcoming campaigns, and with our funding being removed, we may not be able to support the funding to continue these campaigns. And if you do research on United Council by going to our website, you can see all the other great campaigns that we push that you may not be very well aware of. So this is important just because if United Council loses its funding, we can't do these great things for students. We have wonderful staff members that will get cut losing jobs for Wisconsin, as well as a lot of students unavailable to United Council's um, things it can offer them. So having this funding will just support students and help them train because we will be the future leaders of the state and it's great to have these opportunities. Thank you. Just one quick announcement. Okay, so we ran out, unfortunately we did not bring enough of the green copies because we ran out of paper. 
Um, but the postcards we did gave you, give you, if you could give them back if you're in support of us, we would be happy to mail them out on your behalf. And also, if you have any other questions, we're going to stick around till the end and feel free to come and ask us individually. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And last on our public forum is Mike Brunette. Mike was here. I don't see him. Mike left. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Next is the mayor's comments. I'd just like to um, point out that Sheboygan is participating in a Benjamin Moore program called Paints What Paint What Matters. And uh, Department of Planning has identified four city blocks on A Street and Michigan Avenue to participate in this contest. And what it means is um, if we get the most clicks on their website, they will pay to design the painting scheme for those buildings in those four city blocks and then hire the contractors to paint the buildings. So you can either go to the city website, you'll see it uh, on the front page, or you can click on that and it'll take you to a link, or you can go to the paintwhatmatters.com and do the same thing. Now they're accepting votes through June 30th, and, and you can vote once per day. So just so you're aware of that. Next, we'll go on to a hearing in connection with the changes in the text of the city zoning ordinance to change various uh, sections to provide for regulation of donation drop-off boxes. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Please step forward. And if you please give us your name and address. Thank you. My name is Renee Bowerman. I'm here on behalf of Goodwill. We have a store on the south side of the city of Sheboygan. I'm actually um, here from the Milwaukee office. Um, we're Goodwill of Southeastern Wisconsin and Metropolitan Chicago, and Sheboygan is part of that Goodwill region. I want to thank you so much for considering um, regulating the unattended drop boxes that some of you may have noticed in the city. We notice um, throughout, throughout our region more and more of these unattended boxes appearing. And um, we're watching with interest as they appear because as many of you are probably aware, we rely on donated goods to fund our mission. Um, we're not alone in this. There are other um, groups in the community that also um, uh, accept donations, Bethesda, um, St. Vincent de Paul, and others. Um, and so we're watching these boxes appear. I've had the opportunity to do a fair amount of research in how different communities regulate the boxes and, um, and have, have become kind of a, a follower now as people are considering these regulations. Many of the boxes, um, I would even say most, in the city of Sheboygan are operated by um, for-profit <coughs> companies that don't have a brick and mortar presence in the community. So I, I am happy to see um, you considering regulations. Um, these boxes are often confusing to the general public. Um, we've had people pull into our um, donation drive up and ask for a, a tax receipt and say, you know, it was more convenient for me to make my donation in one of, in the box across the street or, you know, at the grocery store down the block, but now I'd like my receipt and we have to say those boxes aren't connected to us. They're not related to us. So we know that they are confusing to the public. We're um, also um, concerned about image when we see boxes that have piles of goods um, around them. Um, you know, sometimes people look at all groups that accept donations as one, and um, you know, we've worked really hard to um, work on our image as a place that. Um, is more on par with a general retail experience and, and we're concerned about that from our image. It's interesting because as I was driving in um, this evening, I saw two boxes together and there were piles and piles of things around. I took a picture with my cell phone. I know it doesn't do much good, but just right here, um, less than a mile from, from City Hall. And so I know that that happens. Um, 
and we don't like to see it, and I don't think others like to see it. It also breaks my heart to see these goods that are left um, out in the elements when they could be valuable to our organization or some other um, organization that serves a, a, a um, community need. So I really want to bring it, you know, bring the boxes to your attention. I'm so glad that you're considering them and uh, urge you to um, consider these regulations carefully and to pass the strongest and most specific regulation that, that you can. As I've seen other communities do this and struggle with um, enforcement, I think that that um, you know, is important and urge you to take that into consideration. And that's all I have, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. Moved and seconded to close the hearing. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Next is the consent agenda. Next is the consent agenda, items 3-1 through 3-1-2. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Next, we'll go on to item number four, reports of officers. Items four, one through four, six will be referred. And under resolutions, items 5.1 through 5.6 will be referred. Under reports of committees, uh, 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing recommending denying a beverage operator's license number 9873 based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his applications, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and a negative recommendation from the Sheboygan Police Department. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept and adopt the report of committee. Any discussion? Yes, is um, Joshua Orville here this evening? He is here. Um, the committee met on, uh, we actually had denied his license back on February 26, 2013, uh, four to one vote. And then he was, it was brought to council and we talked about it at council and it was voted 15 to one on March 4th to deny the license. He came before our committee again on May 14th and we discussed it again. There have been no changes in his record. Um, and we did deny the license uh, again on May 14th, four to one. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Did you want to reply to any of the comments? You want to oh. step up to the microphone, please? Oh, no, you get more than that. <laughs> Gosh, every time I come here, there's more of you guys, and then I get here. You know. Um. And not much has changed, really. Uh, the first time I came in, there were a whole bunch of problems with uh, the application, things that weren't reported, and, and uh, inaccuracies with dates, and blah, blah, blah. And you guys uh, r were really stingy about them and told me, OK, what I need to change. Uh, I went back, uh, edited the, the application a little bit, added a lot of things, added more accurate dates. Um, so when I came back, I had a lot to tell you. Um, I changed. Uh, I think all three of the things that, that were missing, two or three of them, uh, I, everything is covered on the application now. And um, really, I was just instructed, it's, it's a very simple keep your nose clean kind of a thing. It's a matter of time, keep coming to the meetings. So um, frankly, I'm just here uh, to be here, so. Great. Thanks, Josh. Thank mm -hmm. you for those comments. Yeah. 
Is there any further discussion by the alderman? <coughs> Seeing none then, the motion on the floor is to accept and adopt the report of committee. All those in favor, uh, please press your I button or pose your nay button. Clerk can call the roll. Thirteen eyes, one no. Next is 6.2, an RC by Public Protection and Safety recommending the referral of a document submitting a communication from Shane Hall stating that he wishes to report a noise disturbance from the Rehab Bar and Grill located at 1450 South A Street. Um, Alderman Carlson, that'll be referred. And we'll also refer um, 6.3 to finance and ordinance uh, 7.1 that will also be referred along with 7.2 to the public protection and safety and city planning commissions respectively in um, matters laid over 8.1 is an ro number 2013-14 by the city planning commission amending the city zoning ordinance so as to provide for the regulation of donation drop-off boxes. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to accept and file and place the IRO uh, past the ordinance. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Next, we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. Uh, 9.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Christopher Bernier requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 2102 Superior Avenue. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 9.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That'll be referred to law and licensing. Point three is an also an RO submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That'll be referred to law and licensing. 9.4 is a communication submitting a communication from Thomas and Christina Blindauer regarding parking concerns involving a boat and an RV. Referred to public protection and safety. 9.5 is communication from Pam Schneckloth stating that garbage is still a problem at Wildwood Cemetery. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. 9.6 is a, an RO by the City Clerk submitting a tabulation of bids for the Erie Avenue resurfacing project from North 14th Street to North 8th Street. That will be referred to both Finance and Public Works Committees. 9.7 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012, uh, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That will be referred to law and licensing. <coughs> Next, we have a closed session planned. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to, move, uh, to convene in a closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19.851E Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of deliberating the possible grant of an access easement and the terms thereof over a portion of the former Shukert property where bargaining reasons require closed session. Second. It's moved and seconded to go into closed session for those reasons. Would the clerk please call the roll? And if there's no objection by the alderman, we'll invite the two new aldermen to stay for the closed session. Okay, I can help you with anything. Thank you. Very good, thank you. It.